Remember, when they attacked Africa, they did not attack Africa physically. They did not attack Africa educationally. They attacked Africa spiritually. Jomo Kenyatta said when the European first came to Africa, the Africans had the land and the white man had the Bible. White man told him to close his eyes, get on his knees and pray. Jomo said when the black man opened his eyes, the white man had the land and the black man had the Bible. We have bought into a story that we told them. They have twisted it. They got it twisted. We have now bought that story back. What we call the African and the communities that that person lived in is where the concept of religion comes from. Europe never produced a religion, ever. Asia received its religion from Africa. All of them. Buddhism, Hinduism, Shinto. As a matter of fact, to be more scholarly, starts with Hinduism. The first Hindu gods to come across were black African. And they came across, they were actually, they were called Sambo, which is now a derogatory term used for blacks, mulattoes, etc. Uh, Sambo. I said Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are merely fragments from the periphery of the African spiritual system that you call Voodoo. People said, you can't even go there with that. I can go there with that. And I can take on any theologian that you got, bring them down, and I'll show you. Give me your 12 tribes. Give me your 12 disciples. Give me your 99 pearls of faith of Islam, and I'll show you those are nothing but sets of qualities and attributes, and I can juxtapose them in a perpendicular line besides the Orishas of the Yoruba, besides the Loas of the Voodoo, besides the Netas of Egypt and show you we're talking about the same system. Jesus is a name which did not come into existence in the English form until the 1600s. The letter J was not invented until the 1600s. Let me say this again. Now, the letter J was not invented until the 1600s. So the reality is Jesus is not the name of that person. His name is an, an a, uh, Amharic name, uh, Yeshua. 1482, Leonardo da Vinci was commissioned to paint a painting of Christ and the 12 disciples. This was 1482, 10 years before Columbus set sail, because that painting would be the greatest weapon used in colonialism and still is right now, because many black people around the world still have that original uh, Last Supper. And so when Leonardo was asked to paint that picture, he got his uncle to actually sit in. And this is an historic record. He got his uncle to sit in and pose as Christ. And he got 12 criminals from a local jail who happened to be available to sit in as the 12 disciples. The only reason you call God by that name is because your former enslaver, your former oppressor taught you that name. He never taught you the real name. He never gave you the keys to the power to free yourself spiritually so that you, you are now spiritually or religiously still a slave. The African population in North America is the third largest black population in the world in any geopolitical state. Why don't we have a single word out of one of our language for God that we use? The Arabs use their word for God. The uh, Jews use their word for God. The Catholics use their word for God. The Japanese use their word for God. The African is the only population that don't have an African word for God. Yet, studies coming out of Geneva over the last 30 years prove that we are the most um, spiritual people in America, in the world, not just America. We worship with a greater propensity than any other people in the world, but we don't have a single word in our language for our divine. The word Christ is a title. It's not a name. Christ means the anointed one. And there were many people before the birth of Jesus who also bore that title, Christ. There were 16 people who were known as Christ. So Jesus was the last of saviors of mankind, saviors of a group of people who were known as Christ. 
when you talk about the image of Christ. It is important that we no longer uh, ascribe to the European image of Christ. Why? Because the brain is a associating organism. It stores everything as pictures. And because it is associating, if you force feed an African child that Christ is white, because the brain associates, as that child begins to grow, the brain will associate white Christ with white people. And so if white Jesus is God, then white people must also be the gods of humanity. And so guess what? The power in the painting is transferred to the people who resemble that painting. And so it is difficult to pray to a white Jesus and not in some way feel inferior to white people. And that's why when I talk to Christian ministers, I often tell them, you have to change these pictures. They say it don't matter. Of course it matters. Why do you think the European went around the world and systematically altered the image of Christ in every major cathedral, every major church? every corner of the globe because it is difficult to oppress a people whose image of the God doesn't look like the oppressor but when God and the oppressor look one in the same then the people will come to believe that the oppression was ordained by God what we find is that in this story that came out of Kemet after uh, Aset reconstituted the body of, of, of her husband Asar the spirit of Asar came and impregnated his virgin wife, Aset. And then nine months later, the virgin Aset gave birth to her son, Heru. And Heru was born 4,000 years ago on December the 25th. So in 325, it was decided that Jesus Christ would be a son of God. In 325, it was decided that Jesus Christ would be born in the manger in Bethlehem. Up until the Nicene Council, most people believed that Jesus Christ was born in a cave in Ethiopia, even in Ethiopia till today. Christmas was not celebrated in December 25th um, for hundreds of years. It was celebrated in August. They move it to December 25th because that's the Egyptian uh, celebration of the birth of the son of the sun. Talking about Heru and Asa. The image that we have of Santa Claus is the rosy cheek European jolly guy. And that image was created sometime in the um, early 1800s. But the real Santa Claus was a man by the name of St. Nicholas. And when I do research about St. Nicholas, the real St. Nicholas, the further back I go, the blacker St. Nicholas gets. And when you look at pictures and portraits of St. Nicholas in museums in Europe, St. Nicholas is totally black. And there's a museum in Italy that has an old painting of St. Nicholas and he has like dark skin, woolly hair. So people have to realize that the Santa Claus that we know and love today is based on a black saint from Europe. The Council of Nicaea uh, was an effort by, by Constantine to control the people through military and through religion. Whoever can control your concept of God has a weapon more powerful than, than, than any physical weapon, than any sword, any, any gun, any atomic weapon. Whoever controls how you relate to the unseen presence of God will not only control you, but can control your children and your children's children. So it was at the Council of Nicaea that the Constantine, this emperor, needed to find a way to consolidate his power because the people that he conquered in various parts of the world had different religions, different, different ideologies. And it was at <coughs> Nicaea where he brought together these theologians, these, these scholars, if you will, to hammer out one uniform, theology that everyone would follow. And if Constantine could convince people to take Jesus as God on earth and change that he was a human being, then they could take over the control of the Catholic Church and make one. So they invited. And one of the priests was an African known as Arius. Bishop Arius. There's a book called Blacks Who Died for Jesus by Mark Hyman gives the story of Arius. Arius now gets word that Constantine knows Arius is coming to, to dispute this. Because he's saying, how are you going to tell people this? That, 
nobody's going to believe that story. That, that immaculate conception? Come on, you know, that's written on the walls of Egypt. That's a mythology. That's an analogy. You're not supposed to believe that story. That's a nice story to live by, that each and every one of us has Jesus within us and every birth is an immaculate conception. But there was no one boy born as the son of God to freak. Come on, you, 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 you can't. Constantine said, look, come on over here. And I see I'm going to talk to you. He found out that he was going to be assassinated. So he fled into Europe with his followers. Arius and his followers became known as the Arians. Wouldn't Hitler have a heart attack if he knew who the real Arians were? They were a bunch of black folk. Everybody who was worshiping Isis and dealing with mostly a comedic religious philosophy, they said, we can't do this. This is ridiculous. This reminds me, there's no man called Jesus Christ. We ain't never heard of him. Well, Jesus Christ will take Hesus, which was the, the sun god in the West, and we'll take Christos, which was the sun god in the East, and we'll put them together. We'll have a, a name. And so what did he do? A man named Apollonius of Tyana at that time, who had studied philosophy in Kemet, was teaching. He was a healer, working miracles. He was a hero at that time. So he became the template for Jesus Christ. The first slave ship, the first ship that was used to bring Africans from the continent and transport them across the Americas was known as the good ship Jesus. And as Alex Haley said when he did his research for Roots, he said that traditionally when Africans were loaded on the slave ships, the captain in his log would see to it that the first two people loaded aboard those slave ships were a man and a woman, and they were recorded in the ship's log as Adam and Eve. The African priests were always smarter than the European thief. Always remember that. The thief is never smarter than the one he or she is taking from. The one he or she is taking from is a superior being. That's why you're stealing. This is the whole point to why you're taking. Because what we got, you ain't got. And in the, in the case of King James, I believe it was 16... When he initiated 1604-1609, when he commissioned a group of 50 men to pull together all of the references, all of the biblical references in existence. And one of the men who, it is said, participated in this project was the most prolific writer of the English language at that time, a young poet by the name of William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare did work on that project, but as with many religious works that were commissioned during that era, none of the authors were allowed to put their signatures on their works. So artists being the creative people that they are, found creative ways of putting their signatures. In Psalms 46, uh, verse three and Psalms 46 verse nine. The 46 word from the beginning of Psalms 46 is the word shake. The 46 word from the end of Psalms uh, 46 uh, nine is the word spear, Shakespeare's name. Now, if you look at other versions of the Bible, not the King James version, but other versions of the Bible, you won't find that same correlation, only in the King James version. We are so far removed from the reality of our African spirituality. And until we cast aside that white God, we can't be free. 